Welcome Year 8 to uh, this video. In it, I'm going to take you through the key points um, about today's lesson, which is looking at time, which you can see um, here in our first slide. So when we are in this unit, we've been looking at, um, at measurement. Um, obviously, time is something else that is really important that we, we have a way of measuring because it's obviously, um, it, it's our, every, our everyday life is, is basically revolves around around time. So we're going to look today at uh, two ways that time can be measured. So one, the first way is the 12 hour clock, which you're all familiar with. And the second one, a lot of you will be familiar with, it's our 24 hour clock or 24 hour time. So we're going to have a look at that and how we convert between them. And we're also going to look at problems um, involving how to find time that has elapsed. So how, how to find how much time has passed um, and, and to look at other other similar problems. So the key thing about time, uh, so the prior knowledge that you would bring um, to this lesson, is that uh, it doesn't really work or doesn't work at all with the decimal system. So we don't have like um, increments of 10, 100 or 1000 when we are converting between uh, measurements of time like we do with length. Um, we know that 60, uh, 60 seconds are in are in a minute. We know that 60 minutes are in an hour. We know as well that uh, in a day there are 24 hours and then in a week there are seven days. So these numbers here, um, it, it is a little bit uh, more difficult to convert obviously um, but since we know um, we know those facts. If we were had, if we had say one minute, and we were trying to get that into seconds, as you can see, we would multiply that by sixty. If we had uh, two hours, and we're trying to get that into minutes, we would multiply that by sixty. Um, and that's something that you uh, no doubt would have done before. Um, and so that's something that um, we, we won't need to practice, but you'll see that might happen in some of the examples that we do, particularly if we've got um, more than an hour's worth of minutes, we might convert that back into hours. So first of all, 24 hour time, we're familiar with a 12 hour clock and that's generally how we would, um, how we would tell time. We would use AM for uh, times in the morning and we would use PM for times after midday. But what we can do with 24 hour time is instead of having the need to use AM and PM, we can uh, in the second uh, half of the day, so this here would be 1 PM, Instead of uh, starting again at 1 uh, to, to measure our time, we can continue uh, from 12. So as you can see, we might start the day at 12 a.m. Well, we do. We start the day at 12 a.m. We've got 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., etc. Around about 6 or 7, a lot of you will wake up. Uh, you'll head to school. And then at 8.30 here, we'll start school. So then we've got 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Now, if we go past 12 o'clock, so in period 3, um, and we get to 1 p.m., we could actually call that 13 o'clock or 13 double O uh, is how we write it. Likewise, um, if we continue, uh, that means 2 p.m. It's the same as what we call 1400 hours. And then it continues. And as you can see, because we've got another 12 hours in the day, it comes back to 24. We don't have 24 o'clock though. Once you get back here, you'll get start the new day. So we'll start off um, at basically zero starts off at zero and then we go one, two, three, four, etc. So if we have a look at that more closely, we don't need to use AM and PM when we use 24 hour time because each individual time has its own number. So that's useful. Uh, the second 12 hours of the day, which is our, our PM, they're the ones that are gonna have numbers above 12. So the numbers on the outside. And the first 12 hours of the day, well, they're just what you're used to, the AM hours. Now, why would this be useful? Well, it is useful um, for uh, people like in the in the defence, um, in the army, they would use 24-hour time. I guess when you are um, talking about times with people or relaying, um, you're trying to communicate with people, it's best to avoid confusion. So it's best to avoid, um, if you're going to say, we're going to do something at 3, you don't want to uh, get mixed up between 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. So you would say 300, uh, 0300 hours or 1500 hours to distinguish between the two. And then obviously there's, there's, there's not that error in communication. Same with uh, some flights. Flights might also be put in 24-hour time. 
so that people don't accidentally uh, misread their flight ticket and say, um, arrive at the airport at 6 p.m. only to find that their flight left at 6 a.m. That would be very embarrassing. So when we convert, um, if you're converting times that are in the a.m., it's actually quite easy because what you'll do is you'll just make sure you write your time with four digits, so placing a zero at in the front if you need to um, and we don't tend to write a little dot or a little colon or anything we actually just write the number as is so 0930 would be 930 in 24 hour time obviously it's a little bit um uh well you just have to do a, a brief calculation in your head so i wouldn't say it's difficult but it is harder for pm times because you have to consider uh, adding or subtracting 12. so if we want the 24 hour time and we've got our our, our normal clock, we just add 12 to it. Because if you have a look here, the difference between any of these two pairings is 12. So if we add the 12 on, uh, we will get our 24 hour time. And likewise, if you're going backwards, so if you're trying to go from 24 hour time to the 12 hour time, the 12 hour clock, you would subtract 12. So we'll see that um, in a second with some examples. I'll just show you this table. We've got a 12 hour clock here. If we wanted to convert that to 24 hour time, anything AM, like I said, is, is gonna be a lot easier. Um, so 7.30 AM, we would write as 0730, oh, 0, like so. So we'll write it with four digits. And you'll notice I don't need to write AM or PM, just not necessary, um, because once you know this is a 24 hour clock reading, you would know that that is 7.30 in the morning. Um, for something like this, so the 3.45, what you want to do is you want to add, because that's in the afternoon, you want to add uh, to our 3, we're going to add 12 to it. So that will make it 15, and then, of course, 45 minutes. So um, we don't need to put the little colon, but 1, 5, 4, 5. Now, some of you might have a 24-hour clock on your iPad, or you might have a 24-hour clock on the oven or the microwave at home. So you might already be very, very good at this because you're used to it. You get loads of practice by looking at it all the time. This one here as well. So we're at 11 p.m. So if we add 12 onto that, we get 23. So this will be 23 hours, and then this part will stay the same 15 minutes after that. Now, if we're going backwards, uh, first of all, we just have to, anything that's that's before midday, so before 12, that, that won't really need to be to, ch to change at all. We don't actually add or subtract anything to it. So if you have a look at this one, this is clearly in the morning, so it's 9.30 in the morning. So if I was converting that back, I would write it in this same format, but then I would write a.m. So it's clear it's in the morning. As you can see, these three here are above 12. So it's clear that it's 24 hour time. So we just need to subtract now so that we can get it back into our 12 hour clock. So I'll just look at the hours. It's 15, 1500 hours. So if I take away 12 from that, I'm left with three. So this must be three and then our minutes, 42. And that's in the afternoon. In fact, all of these are in the afternoon. All right, now, same deal, 19. If we take away the 12, we're left with 7, so 7.36 p.m. And this one, oh, just like before, actually, we've got the 2,300 hours. I'm taking away 12 from that. So I'm left with 11, and that's 11.14. Okay, so you'll get a bit more practice with this shortly. Um, the second thing we're going to be doing is looking at problems um, involving, um, you know, different problems involving time. So if we have a look at this one as the first example, we've got a truck driver and this tr truck driver has driven uh, a long way. As you can see, she's, she's spent five hours, 45 minutes on Monday, four hours, 50, we've got six hours, 30 on the Wednesday. So we've got three different chunks of time. Now what we want to be able to do is add these together. So we've got our hours and our minutes. On day one, we've got the five hours, 45. Day two, we've got four hours, 50. And day three, we've got six hours, 30. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
because I can see um, when I add these minutes together, I'm going to get over an hour. I'm going to add them together first. So that if I get over an, over an hour, I can pop those extra hours into my next column. So this is just one strategy. It's not the strategy you have to use. You can um, use any strategy you like. But the main thing is that we're keeping in mind that as soon as I go over 60 minutes, I've got an additional hour. So let's add these up now. So I've got five minutes there. And then I've got five and four is nine, nine and three is 12. So I've got 125 minutes. So you wanna consider how many hours would be in 125 minutes. Considering there are 60 minutes per hour, and if I divide 125 by 60, I'm gonna get two. So two hours are gonna be in there with a remainder of five minutes. So what I can do over here is I can add my, my two hours. So now I've got um, five and four is nine, nine and six is 15. So I've got 17 hours over there. And don't forget, I've got this remainder of five minutes. So in total, I had 17 full hours and I had another five minutes left over. So all up, this truck driver um, has spent 17 hours and five minutes driving across those three days. So deal with your minutes first. Any that you can convert to whole hours, we'll shift them across to the hour calculation. And then any leftover minutes, we're going to put that um, in addition to our answer. So if we have a look at something like this, this is looking at what we call a lapse time, so um, or the time duration. So how much time has passed? It's another way of looking at it. Elapsed sort of means gone or um, yeah, passed. So um, it's maybe not a word that you've used commonly, but we tend to use it for time a fair bit. So Jane left home at 3.54 and she's traveling. She'll go into her aunt's house. She arrived at three, uh, sorry, at 5.40. So you can see we're not in 24 hour time. We're just in our standard time. How long did her journey take? Now with something like this, some people benefit from considering this, um, putting this on a, a line. So we've got three, four, five, and I'll just extend it a, a little bit. And then six. Just to help you get a bit of a visual. So keep in mind that we, this is not a proper number line because a proper number line would deal with sort of like decimals and um, that, that base system of 10. Whereas we're working with a base system here of 60 minutes. So it's like another 20, 40, 60, 20, 40, 60, 20, 40, 60. So I'm breaking it up like this. Because 3.54, it's not going to be half, about halfway. It's actually going to be really close to 4 o'clock. So it's going to be about here. And this is where you've got to be careful with elapsed time. That you don't accidentally think about, uh, say, 100 minutes per hour. Because we know that's not how it works. She arrived at 5.40. So that's going to be here. So sometimes the easiest thing to do with these is to break it up and sort of leap ahead in hours. So if I was trying to do this in my head, I'd probably think, well, an hour would take me to 4.54 and then another hour would take me to 5.54. And that's, of course, about 16 minutes too much. So then I could take away the 16 minutes. So if you want to do it that way, you can. Otherwise, I could say, well, it's six minutes takes me to four o'clock. And then from four to 5.40 is one hour and 40 minutes. So then I could add these together. So I could take my six minutes and my one hour, 40 minutes. So one hour, 46 minutes all together. Uh, if I did it the other way, I would have had uh, two hours uh, goes to uh, 5.54. 
I wanted, so once I get to, uh, so if I do it this way, I've got 3.54, two hours will take me to 5.54, which is taking off, I need to take off 14 minutes. And that's if I do 60 minus the 14, um, that's how I get the 46 minutes. So one hour and 46 minutes. Finally, Jane's father drove from her home um, and he's managed to do so in much faster time. It only took him 48 minutes. So how much longer did it take Jane to arrive? Keep in mind it took her one hour 46. And we're comparing that to just 48 minutes. So we want to see the difference between these. We want to find the difference between these two. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this one. First of all, um, if you consider uh, 48 minutes is 12 minutes away from an hour, we could do 12 minutes plus the 46 minutes. That's how much extra on one hour. And so we would get uh, 58. Or you could add an hour onto 48. That would make one hour 48. Um, but that takes us over by two minutes. So we could take one hour, subtract two minutes, and we get the 58 as well. So it's another way of looking at it. So keep in mind that using some sort of line like this can be helpful, breaking up the time. If you have a look at these last three here, we've got um, a journey starting at 1720. So again, I might just break this up into thirds. That's increments of 20 minutes. So 1720 is 520, which is here, 520 p.m. We want to go to um, 1845. So that's going to be around about here. So we're trying to work out the difference between these two. So you could just break it up. One thing you could do is break it up here and go how many minutes from 1720 to, to 6, uh, sorry, from 520 or 1720 to 1800 hours or to 6 o'clock. So that's going to be another 40 minutes. And then we've got here from 18 to 18.45 is 45 minutes. So in minutes, we've got 85 minutes. Or if we break that up, that's one hour would be 60 minutes plus another 25 minutes. Another way you could have done it um, is to go from the 17.20 to 18.20, that's one hour, to 18.20 here. And from 18.20 to 18.45 is another 25 minutes. So whatever's easiest for you, depends on the question sometimes as well, it might change your approach. This next one here, we've got 7.42, so if I break this up, 7, oh, not quite there, a bit, a bit across, 7.42, and then we've got 11.57, so that's going to be three minutes before, okay, there we go, okay, so again, maybe this jumping, um, might be helpful, one hour to there, two hours, three hours, and then we've got another jump, takes us over here to 7.42, oh, sorry, to 11.42, and then we could just work out the minutes. So we have seven to 11 is four hours, and from 42 to 57, that's another 15 minutes. Now we could have uh, worked out this little bit here. Uh, another 18 minutes there. Then these sections and then the 57. But I think this way is definitely the easiest in this particular case. So we jump forward the uh, whole number of hours and then we just jump forward the tiny bit of all the, the minutes really, breaking it up into hours and then minutes. Okay, last one. We've got 11.52. So around about here. 
and then we've got 1, 24, so 20, 40, 60, so 24 just over here. Okay, so if we go from first maybe 1152 to 12, that's 8 minutes. Then we've got from 12 to, to 1, or from 12 to 13 is 1 hour. And then finally our 13 to 24. Whoops, 13 to 13, 24. Another 24 minutes. And we just need to add all of these together. So we've got one hour, and then we just need to do our 24 plus eight. So that's one hour and 32 minutes. Uh, we could of course just gone 11.52 to 12.52 and then added it from there. Um, but either way, we, we should come out with the same result. So I'll stop there so that you can get some practice with this. A, a range of different questions converting between the the time the the time measurements, so 12 hour clock or 12, 24 hour clock, and then working with elapsed time. So do draw yourself a little a line if you need it. If you feel like you don't need it, then that's okay. Um, hopefully, then you are checking your um, checking your answers just to make sure you are actually accurate.